Welcome to the 2016 Detroit Auto Show. Behind me is the 2017 Lexus LC500. The LC500 is, believe it or not, a production car. It looks a lot like the LFFC concept car that we saw here at the 2012 Detroit Auto Show. Right now, it's only got one powertrain, a five liter V8 that puts out 467 horsepower. And the big news is that that V8 is made into a 10 speed automatic transmission. The LC500 should go zero to 60 in about 4.4 seconds, which means it's an actual performance coupe, not just something that looks pretty, even though it does look pretty damn pretty to us. It's front engine, rear wheel drive, just like any performance sports coupe should be. And it has an impressive 52 to 48 front rear weight distribution. A lot of the body is high strength steel. There's a composite floor pan, and you can even get an available carbon fiber roof. We don't know how much the LC500 is gonna cost, but we assume that its price is going to touch six figures. Seeing something this remarkable on the show floor is a fantastic way to start off the Detroit Auto Show. We're here at the uh, 2016 Detroit Auto Show taking a look at the new Audi H-Tron Quattro concept. This is Audi's hydrogen powered vehicle. It powers two electric motors, one at the front and, and one at the rear. So making this in essence uh, an electric Quattro, if you will. This car has a range of more than 370 miles to a fill up and it can be filled up in just four minutes. So that's pretty impressive. That's about which you'd fill up from a gas perspective. It also hits zero to 62 in seven seconds, so fairly uh, spirited for a hydrogen-powered vehicle. In addition, the H-Tron has uh, several new uh, key technologies that you're gonna find on the new Audi A8, including some remote parking features and autonomous drive capabilities. And then um, in the inside as well, a lot of OLED tech, and haptic feedback technology that's presaging the new Audi interior technology and their autonomous technology. So a technological showcase, a vehicle that uh, seems to be very important for Audi in its future uh, and something that we may see in the not too distant future if hydrogen at some point becomes more of a, a reality than a curiosity. This is the new BMW M2 in 2011. BMW gave us the 1 Series M Coupe. This car carries on with that. The M3, the M4, they've gotten a bit big, a bit heavy. Enthusiasts are saying, we want a car that's a bit less expensive. So, 52 grand, 365 horsepower, rear wheel drive, aluminum front and rear suspension stolen from the M4 and the M3, limited slip, rear differential, electronic limited slip rear differential, one interior color, black with blue stitching, 15 inch front brakes, this is the car we've been waiting for. The One Series uh, M Coupe was fantastic. This car should be quicker. We'll see, we'll lose some of the verve. We'll see. We really like the M235i, and that car with a limited slip is almost 50 grand. This car's only 52 grand. I can't figure out why anyone is gonna buy the M235i after the M2. Well, Volvo introduced its stunning new S90 rear drive sedan here at the Detroit show. Now wait a minute, it's not rear wheel drive, it's actually a front wheel drive car, but like the uh, concept cars that Volvo has shown in the last couple of years, it's got a rear wheel drive style dashed axle. The uh, four cylinder supercharged turbocharged engine fits sideways between the front wheels, and if you get the T8 plug-in hybrid version, some of the uh, hybrid me mechanism goes uh, between the engine and the front firewall. Uh, that also provides extra crash protection, but it also gives the car a really elegant look. And that's especially true in this S90, which shares its platform with the XC90. Now, just like the XC90, the S90 will be available with the standard 2-liter supercharged and turbocharged four-cylinder engine, making 317 horsepower. The plug-in hybrid version will make 400 horsepower. The interior is exquisite. It's just really nicely done, and it's full of beautiful Scandinavian style wood and sumptuous leather. The S90 also adds Volvo's second generation pilot assist system. The car goes on sale this summer. We're looking forward to driving it. If it's anything like the XC90, it'll be a nice ride. This is the second year in a row that Buick has had a big, exciting, surprise debut at the Detroit show. Last year it was the Avenir sedan, and this year it's this Avista Coupe. It's a pretty great design and it really gets us excited about Buick and we think it might even have more potential for getting built than the Avenir did. 
It shares the same platform as the Chevy Camaro, and it takes its turbo V6 engine from the new Cadillac CT6. So it's clear that GM has the parts in its catalog to make something like this. We really hope they do, because it could be a huge image booster for Buick, even if it wouldn't necessarily sell as well as the new crossover that they're also showing here. The only real negative reaction we heard was that they didn't call it the Grand National. Forget about town and country. Chrysler's minivan is now called Pacifica. It's a name you might remember from a SUV sold about a decade ago. But this is still a minivan. Three rows of seats, they fold down into the floor, all that kind of thing that families love. Now this van, the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, is about 200 to 250 pounds lighter than before. But it's larger, it's more spacious inside, and it's got more features. Under the hood, there's still a 3.6 liter V6 engine. It's a little more fuel efficient, and now it has a nine speed automatic transmission instead of a six speed. But the big news is that there's also a hybrid Pacifica for the first time. This is the first hybrid minivan, and it'll get up to 80 miles per gallon combined. And because it's a plug-in hybrid, you should be able to go about 30 miles just on electricity without turning on the gas engine. Other cool new features on the Pacifica include touch screens on the back of the driver and passenger seat that let your kids play games, watch movies, or even see how long it'll be until you reach your destination. There's a tri-pane panoramic sunroof, and the power sliding doors can now be opened by just kicking your foot underneath them. Perfect for if you've got your arms loaded down with groceries or children. The 2017 Chrysler Pacifica goes on sale later this year, and it looks to be a big step forward to the minivan segment. Q60 is the uh, latest example of the realignment of Infiniti's alphanumeric model names. Obviously, replaces the G35, and it's the two-door coupe version of the Q50 sedan. It's got a little more expressive sheet metal like most coupe versions of sedans, a lot of unique sheet metal versus the sedan. It will be available with three engines. The base engine is a Mercedes-Benz two-liter turbocharged four, or you have a choice of a 300 horsepower or 400 horsepower twin turbo three-liter V6. Coupe models are always fashion cars. They come and go, but they're very important halos to a, a premium brand like Infiniti. Infiniti expects and hopes to sell more than 200,000 units globally this year, and this car will add a little volume to that when it goes on sale this summer. Eleven years ago, Honda introduced the first Ridgeline here at the Detroit Auto Show, but honestly it didn't do huge things in the marketplace. Customers really wanted a truck that was a little bit bigger and a little bit more capable. But the truck market's changed, and now customers are recognizing that they can make do with a smaller truck, things like the Chevy Colorado and Toyota Tacoma. So there's an all-new Honda Ridgeline here. Like before, it's unibody, and it's got a 3.5-liter V6 up front. But there's a couple of changes. It's a lot more truck light. It doesn't have the flying buttress design anymore. It's got a traditional truck profile. As before, you can get four-wheel drive, but there's also a front-wheel drive option that'll be a little more fuel efficient if you need a truck but don't really need to go off-road or drive through snow. Other cool features on this truck, it's still got the dual action tailgate, so it flips down like on every other truck, but it also flips over to the side. There's the lockable in-bed storage compartment, which is great for tailgating. And there's even a set of speakers in the bed, so you can blast music as loud as you want while you're tailgating. We're curious to see how this will stack up against the Tacoma, Chevy Colorado, and GMC Canyon, because ultimately being unibody, it might not give people the towing and payload capacity they want out of a pickup truck. But for a casual truck user who just needs a little bit of space in the bed, it could be an interesting new offering. In search of brand revitalization, Lincoln had promised us four new models. We saw the MKC, the MKZ, and the MKX. Now we have the cleanup hitter, the Lincoln Continental. It's the return of a flagship car and a lot of expectations around it. The top trim 2017 Lincoln Continental will be the brand exclusive three liter twin turbo V6 with 400 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque and standard torque vectoring all wheel drive. Lincoln's goal with the new Continental is a kind of quiet luxury or so they say. Their idea is that let somebody else do hood scoops and Nurburgring lap times. This is about simplicity, elegance, and clarity. And I think with this design, they've really achieved that. It might not be as wild or as crazy as some people might want for a new Continental, but they're trying to take the brand in a different direction. Lincoln's engineers also focused a lot on the interior of the car. It's all about providing a sophisticated experience. Part of this revised interior experience is the Lincoln Perfect Position seat. It's a 30-way adjustable seat with crazy things like individual thigh adjustments, cooled massage, heating functions. It's trying to create something different for the driver. The car also comes with a super high-end Revel audio system, which remains one of the best audio systems we've tested in any car. 
We'll have to wait and see whether this is the jolt of life that the Lincoln brand sorely needs, but I think it's safe to say that this has the potential to be a very, very solid start. We wrap up our coverage of the 2016 Detroit Auto Show down the street from Cobo Hall here at the Westin Book Cadillac, where Mercedes has just shown us the 2017 E-Class. The all-new, completely redesigned E-Class is going to launch here in the United States first with an inline-four engine, but then you can expect more variants to follow, a diesel, a hybrid, and a six-cylinder model, which might even have a rumored inline-six engine. You can also expect a variety of body styles, the sedan, the coupe, Cabriolet and the beloved wagon and that means that yeah we're hoping the E63 AMG wagon makes a comeback too. The E300, the first model to launch here, is going to come with a 2 liter turbo 4 and a 9 speed automatic. The E class has been completely restyled to look more like the C and S class that bookend it. The interior of the E class is totally S class. There are two 12.3 inch widescreen displays, one in front of the driver and another in the center stack. And there are new touch sensitive controls on the steering wheel that respond to smartphone like swipes to call up various menus. The 2017 E class will be available with a suite of semi autonomous driving features including active lane change assist for overtaking maneuvers and a follow function that locks onto a vehicle in front and autonomously controls the accelerator brakes and steering so there you have it the top 10 cars from the 2016 detroit auto show